Morning. I've come back to the original Ron Ransom palette. Uh, we've got here Cadmium Yellow, that's an artist quality one. Raw Sienna, Elizabeth Crimson, Light Red, Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, Paints Grey, Burnt Sienna. Straight out of the tube. So, and on the large butcher's tray or display, food display tray, it's, it's about twice the size of the one I normally use. Uh, so it gives a, a lot of scope for slopping paint about. Now, I, I, I've been looking back over the video clips of Ron, Ron Ransom, including Mike Porter's short documentary where Ron does three quick demos. Well worth looking at. He's my hero, my watercolour hero mainly because he made it possible for me to do some reasonable paintings within my own limits without trying to attempt the art of the impossible or at least at the time when it was impossible it's just a matter of perseverance really but there will always be people better than me and you so what Ron would do I'm going to do this one. This is a Fabriano, 130 pounds. Ron used, I think, Buckingham for 140 pounds. Better quality. Well, not better quality. Different. This is a very slick paper. Very good for wet and wet. So what I'm going to do is just get some some nice nice wet. Um, we'll just just put some on here. I should have put some more out, I'll have to do that. I've got my tubes, I've gone back to my box easel. So I won't soak it, but just give it a bit of a, well it's missing out some of the, the dry paper. And I do need a lump of cloth, so I'll put that on there. And now a bit of, bit of ultramarine. These are all uh, cotton tubes, yeah. got them in 21 mil tubes, apart from the cadmium yellow which I have. I had a, some cotton but it, over the years it's dried out because I use, use the lemon yellow for, but I think of going back to uh, the, the cad yellow. So let's just, negative sp spaces for these clouds. And then we'll put in some Payne's Grey, Payne's Grey and some alizarin. So the thing about painting with uh, moist paint like this is that you can get your colour mixes very quick and if you want thicker paint you've got it. Oh. And that is a good cloud colour. Okay, so just I'll bring some raw sienna back down there, down the bottom there. You don't have to use all the colours just because they're there, but it's just a basic palette. That, that'll do. Well, I think that needs a bit, a bit, a bit of, a bit more strength in the clouds. So I'm going to just thicken that up a bit. See what happens to that. Let's just bring a bit of this over here. And then I'll mix a bit of blue and for a bit of distant hill. Put a bit of umber in there. Quite a low horizon for this one. This is just a simple landscape, making it up as I as I go along. And put a bit of yellow in here. Nice field. So it's such a lovely, strong colour, this uh, yellow, cad yellow. 
do have a look at the one man some bits and pieces they're, they're mainly short videos because he's obviously wants to uh, make some money out of his the DVDs just filling in a bit there I don't make videos I'm quite happy to, to do this Okay. Well, it's done a little too much. It's uh, showing through here. So uh, I'll just reclip the paper. Normally, you wouldn't have to do this with the 140 bucking for that's just, I think it's a spiral bound lantern. I'm not sure, but I think it's bucking for paper. But I might have that wrong. Now let's put a bit of strength on the mid ground there. Right, now some nice rich burnt umber and some sienna in here. This land, landscape and field beyond is, is whatever you think it is. It, it's a sort of an abstract. I do like this uh, hit and miss, this driver. So if you, if you leave some of your paper just a little bit dry, you can get this different effect with your brush. You can get it flooding like that, or you can get this hit and miss foreground and add some different colours in it with a bit of light red. In fact this light red is uh, the Venetian red. It's the same, I'm sure it's the same stuff. Now I haven't used any greens yet but I'm going to use some some now. So I want to just put in some paint grey and some 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 of that cad yellow in it. So So just use different bits of the, the hake. It's I mean it's a tricky brush to get to used to, but but it do persevere with it, it just paid dividends. You'll put some just put some burnt umber in there, a bit of paint grey. Uh, just get some shadow in this side here. It's very similar to one of the demos of Ron's, but I'm making it up. And, and Ron was a great one for flicking out, which I'm going to do with my finger now. As, and I'll use it as another brush. Sort of an Essex scene. That's very just there. I might take that tree up a little bit, a bit higher. Got a nice big, big top to it. So Alan, Alan's had a couple of goes at uh, using the hake, but he just doesn't use the two inch hake. But with me, it's whatever makes a mark that does what, it, what you want it to do. I'll just uh, put a bit of a balance over that side. See, that's drying, now we've got the dry brush effect. <coughs> so we need a smaller one in the middle over, over here. I will just get that across here. Just to balance. We can take, uh, we can make some of that there into a reflection.
but to do that let's uh, put a bit of that heavier colour in there and then the darker green I might do a couple of these just uh, to get me in the mood. So I haven't painted since Saturday. I'm going to put a bit of a bit of darker burnt umber to reflect that. But only sort of loose, we don't want it to Just got that black yellow just to finish that little bit in there. And a little bit of lightish green. Just plain grey and a bit of that yellow. Right, we'll uh, put a little bit of a uh, heavier stuff in here. Right, that's gone a little bit, bit limpy there, so I'm going to put some bit of more shadow in there. Right, okay, we'll uh, put a mountain on that and see what we've done. And I'll clean the palette up and see what other paper I can find. I've got uh, plenty of arches and saunders, but for doodling like this, it's better that I use the cheaper papers. Um, not one of my best guys, but I didn't wet it all over. It was the, the wet and dry, let's put that on there. Okay. Oops. So there we are, I could do a little bit with the rigger, just, well why not. Right, I'll put a signature on it. Right, okay, so I'll bring you round. So there we are, another very, very simple marshland scene, I suppose that's what you could call it. Marsh with some trees, sort of shrub there, or some foliage anyway. Bit of reflection there. I could lift that out just to show a bit of wind ruffling. Or maybe I will. So to do that, just dry your hake out. But leave it, well don't dry it too dry, just, just limp just damp and then just take out a little bit, a bit of that, just to show a little bit of wind ruffling or an eel or something, it's disturbing the surface. Well, I hope that gave you some idea of how to do a simple made up landscape, a bit of a doodle. Uh, I'm going to find another bit of paper now and have a go at something very similar. There's my palette. I'm going to give that a clean 
and then all the paint will still be damp. Thanks for watching. Oops, sorry. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.